Welcome to the fifth video on Microsoft Windows 8. All the other videos we focused on the Surface and how Windows 8 looks on the Surface. And this time I'm running it on a laptop. And this is a laptop that doesn't have a touch screen. And so the main purpose of this video is to sort of show you some of the things that we've done on a touch screen that um, you also need to be able to do on a laptop and might not be intuitive right at the beginning. And so the first thing I just wanted to point out is that if you're launching an application, it works um, just as you would expect. You take the, the cursor and you click on the thing that you want to launch. Um, on a touch screen, you would swipe from the, from the left hand side to go back to the last app. On a mouse based system, one without a touch screen, you actually move the cursor to the upper left hand corner and that will, that will return you back to the last one. Um, if you want to see all of the apps that are open on the touch screen, you, you sort of went from the left hand side, swiped in and then down. Well, this one you get up to the left hand corner and then you swipe down and then you see all the applications there. Um, now, one thing you might be wondering is why the corner? It's like, isn't that tough to just point the, the cursor up to the, up to the corner? Um, the idea, I watched a video um, on the researchers who did this, and they said that what they found is that buttons were really hard for people to sort of get to, like even this button here, um, to focus right over it. But when you go to the edges, edges and ex especially the edges, but even the, the sides, edges and corners, um, it's actually infinite space there, because if you try to overshoot it, you're still going to be in the corner. And so it's really easy for people to hit that corner, whereas it could be tough for them to find the button. And so almost all of the touch gestures um, that you would have that were fairly easy to do on a touch screen, they've changed to mouse actions that deal with the corners. So at the top here, this is the one same thing going from the left hand side and moving in. Um, if you want to sort of mimic the same thing as the Windows key, it's the bottom left hand corner. So this will take you back to the start page. Um, obviously, most keyboards also have a Windows key and you can just press that to go back and forth between apps. Um, but the start page is still accessible um, down on that side. Um, so another, another one is the charms and the charms go to the upper right hand corner and you see the charms menu comes um, on the side. It doesn't have the um, the black background color that it has on on the touch screen and so it's a little hard to see just because of my background here. Let me let me scroll over a little bit here. Get some blank space so that makes it a little clearer. So you can see there's the charms. <clears throat> now to scroll where you would normally um, swipe back and forth to scroll on, on uh, touch screen. On Windows, you can either just move your cursor, um, try to move it to the beyond the edge in the direction you want to go, or you'll also see there's a, there's a bar at the bottom here that you can just scroll back and forth. Um, now, you also have on the touch screen this bottom menu that you would swipe up on. How you get to that one on a mouse based system is you use the right mouse key and that will bring up that bottom menu. So you can see here that shows the all, all apps one. If you go to maps um, and you want to see the options there, you can see just right mouse button shows that. So back to the start screen. Um, and then also, you remember how we were able to zoom in and zoom out um, on the start menu? Um, you don't really have a, a zoom gesture on a mouse. What they did is they added this little um, bar at the bottom here. And if you click that, you'll see it zooms out. That's not available on all apps. Um, here, let me just go back to the normal size. So for example, maps. If you go to a map and you want to zoom in, they don't have that bar down there, but what you can do is you can do um, control plus and control minus. And this works in, in a number of applications. So, so that's, the, that's one of the ways to zoom in and zoom out. Um, and then I think the only other gesture that I've, that I've missed, the main one, is remember we have the close where you drag it from the top and drag it down? Well, if you move your cursor all the way to the top of the screen, you'll see it changes to a hand. You just um, left click and then drag it, and then you can do the same thing. Drag it to the bottom and that will close it. 
Um, so basically, all the gestures are mimicked by using the edges of the screen. Um, an exception is, you remember how selection, we used to just pull a little bit? To select tiles in this one, you actually right-click on it, and then it brings up the menu, and it also has select the tiles. If you wanted to do it to multiple tiles, you just continue to um, use the right mouse button to do that. And then basically, you have all of, all of the gestures there. Um, now, there's also a number of shortcut keys, and I'm not going to go through even a small fraction of them because there's just so many of them. Um, most of them are based on the Windows, the Windows key, and so Windows Tab will bring up that menu that I was showing you there before, and if you keep on pressing it, it moves through, through the open applications. And so that's a useful one to know. Um, as a... As a power user, one that I always want to try to get to is some of those old applications. And I showed you before how you could just start typing the name of an app and it will bring it up. But if you don't remember the name of the app or you don't remember the location, um, what they've done is they've added a lot of, a lot of those um, common power user tasks to the Windows X key. And you'll see it opens up a little menu, context menu on the left-hand side. And there's where you can get programs and features, mobility center, power options, event viewer, system, device manager, disk management, computer management, command prompt, command prompt with admin, task manager, control panel, et cetera, et cetera. So it gives you a lot of access there. Another one that I find quite useful is Windows I. And that opens up the, the settings um, for the PC so that you can do things like shut down, um, power down, um, connect to your wireless network, everything else. Um, but there's basically a whole bunch of, of these. And I'll put the, I'll put the URL in the, in the comments on this video when I post it so that you can see all of those um, just because there, there are so many. And um, basically, besides that, I think everything else will work just as it does on the touch device. Um, so still very usable, but very different than what you were probably used to prior to Windows 8. Um, now, one thing I, I feel sort of obliged to tell you is if you, if you haven't already uh, upgraded to Windows 8, and um, there's, there's a few things you want to check. Like the real difference in Windows 8 is the, is the UI, this touch interface. Um, and so if you don't have a touch device, the question might come up, why do you want to move to Windows 8? Um, the main two reasons I can think of is, number one, you're, um, you are using touch devices or there's applications that you like from the Microsoft Store and you want to be able to run them. In order to have your interface look like your touch device or to get access to all those new applications, you need Windows 8. And so that's, that's one good reason to upgrade to Windows 8 early on. Um, the other one is if you're an application developer. Um, if you're not in one of those three categories, um, I actually, I'd wait until you, be, you enter one of those categories. Um, if you buy a new PC, it will probably come with it, and that's great. You may as well get used to it. But um, if, if you're using Windows 7 apps or even Windows XP apps, and it's all working for you, um, without the touch screen and without needing to have access to the new applications, there's, there are some other new features, but they're, they're, they're sort of edge case things, some better SkyDrive integration. Um, there are some performance improvements, um, things like that. So just do a little bit of research, but I, I wouldn't be running out if you don't fall into one of the three categories that I put earlier. And that's about it, a Windows 8 on a non-touch device. Next video, we'll return to more on Surface.